Good morning, everybody. It's a Monday morning, way up here in Sydney, Maine, up on a really nice lake, Veselonsky Lake. We've got a stamp concrete patio we're doing. It's about 60 feet long, around eight, between eight and 10 feet wide. I came up last week, got this all formed up. About six inches thick, got a nice mat of rebar in there, two foot on center. Got the conveyor truck here today. Couldn't get a pump truck, and the only other way we could really reach this was the conveyor. So the conveyor will reach about the length of the house. Then we gotta get it into that 16 foot chute. We can get a little bit closer to the end. So we're just getting ready. Got color in the concrete. We've got 12 yards coming. Now in this job, I'm working right directly for the homeowner. And the homeowner, what he had here before was he had a wooden deck. You can kind of see the, like the sill plate still on the house with the, with the joist hangers there. That deck kind of came out and was about eight or nine feet, I think. And then under the deck where we are right now, there was an old concrete patio, just broom finish. Didn't really slope the right way. It was broke up a little bit. So he wanted to just tear all that off and redo new. So that's, he got all the, like the, the groundwork done. He did that. He tore the deck off. All we had to do was we, I came up, I put up the forms, got the styrofoam in, you know, tied in the mat of rebar to get all the prep work done for the concrete pour. So that was, that was our part in this job. And then, you know, the biggest part for us here was pouring it like we are right now getting it stamped and then getting it cleaned and sealed, which you'll see a little bit later in the video. So the access was pretty tough. We only had that one real spot we could access a concrete truck. Luckily, we have a concrete company that has this 40 foot conveyor on the back. And as you saw right in the beginning of the video, we still needed our 16 foot cold chute to reach you know, far enough so we could pull the concrete to this back edge because this thing's about 60 feet long. Now the, the conveyor truck does work pretty good in most cases for stuff like this. Now when I formed this up, I had a couple things I had to go by. I had a set of granite steps, which is down towards the middle of the pad on the right hand side here as you're looking at it. And the slab wanted to slope up towards the house from there. So everything sloped away from the house. And then on the house, there was a, you know, there was a, I think it was a slider door or a six foot walk-in door on the house that you know we couldn't be higher than that obviously and we didn't want really like a trip edge there so we had to kind of match match that door sill right there and still be able to get the pad to slope out away that's why if you're wondering like, like why the forms are the way they're at obviously and there's another granite set of steps right here on the left on the front you can see we had to match too and then he had the you know the set of pressure treated stairs coming down from that upper deck up top so there was kind of a lot of components to getting this formed up and getting it right getting it square we he didn't want us to go around the little uh the little like post uh concrete post here in the front right corner you'll see that when i snap back so we formed out around that he wanted that right there on the right bottom right hand corner he, he didn't want that just in case that was going to move he didn't want that affecting the slab and we do have on the one there, you can see by the stairs, I got some foam up against it, so it leaves a little bit of a buffer there in case something moves, it's not going to break the slab up. And it's just, basically, it's just a matter of us getting the concrete where we need it, getting it pulled around, and then I I tried to set, when I formed this up, setting the forms to, to grade so we could screed right off top of the forms. The only thing I couldn't do was in this front right corner right here, it was there was something there where I just couldn't get it down that last quarter to three eighths of an inch. That's why it looks like the slab's a little bit lower in that one little spot. It's really, it's really the forms are a little bit higher just in that corner. That's really what it is. And then for the rest of it, we could just match the top, which made the pouring pretty easy. Then up against the house, up against the house, we just put some ISO foam up against the house set. When we glued that on, we glued it right to grade. And that kind of gives the, the slab a buffer up against the house. And we're trying to keep the splatter off the house too. That's why we're using that little piece of cardboard there. And if we do get any on it, we'll just wipe it off. You know, we can wipe a little bit off as we go right here. Or when we get back on it to finish it, we, you know, we usually have a rag with some clean water. And we'll just wipe off any little bit of splatters that way. We really probably could have put some poly up here. It was a little windy this morning. That's why we didn't put the poly up. Sometimes that poly just 
when in the, the siding had a little bit of dew on it too so it would have been hard to get any tape to stick to it you no know, that's kind of a 50 50 thing just wipe it off as you go or fight the poly that keeps falling all in all though everything's going pretty good so far we we tried to get as much that conveyor truck will hold nine and a half to ten yards of concrete legally on it and it really holds 11 yards in the drum but because of the weight we tried to get as much of the concrete on that conveyor truck to make our jobs as easy as possible and then this last truck just had a little balance load he didn't charge us extra for it because we needed two loads anyway we just put 85 percent of the concrete on the first truck and 15 percent on the second truck and then we had color in the concrete now when we when we do color we do it two ways is we usually buy it by the bag the powder in the bag and then we bring it to the concrete plant early in the morning and we throw it right in the concrete trucks before they batch the concrete so as he's batching the concrete the the colors mixing in the concrete and then it's mixing slowly mixing in all the way to the job too that gets it thoroughly mixed in the in the concrete now if you don't do it that way if you put the color in at the job you just got to make sure it it spins and spins and spins for about 10 minutes so it gets thoroughly mixed in from the you know top part of the drum all the way down to the bottom of the drum and that's that's kind of how the pour goes right there even though the concrete looks like regular concrete it's really darker it's a little darker gray which is which is what these people wanted with the, the stamp pattern that they picked out all right so this is our this is our patio we got it all in now we just gotta wait for it to secure up a little bit so we can get the stamps on it so we'll be back probably it will probably give it 30 to 45 minutes check it see if it's firm enough and then we'll be back stamping we'll see you then no, I don't think it is not quite yet on the brick you bring that Still just a little soft. Not far though. about getting started otherwise we'll be ramming it up there so this is probably one of the hardest things to learn when you stamp concrete is knowing when to start especially if you're on styrofoam I mean pouring on styrofoam some of the some of the bleed water the mixed water wants to come up rise up to the surface and then you know if you're kind of half in the shade half in the sun Actually, this is a little bit more than half in the shade here. It doesn't necessarily want to dry up and, and, and evaporate. So you're kind of fighting that bleed water a little bit. But the concrete's also getting firm underneath. And you know you got 60 feet to go. So there's a point where you gotta, you, you just got to make things happen one way or the other. Now, luckily, you know, almost all the bleed water dried up on this. And the concrete was firming up pretty good. It was six inches thick. Pouring on styrofoam also makes the... The concrete set up just a little bit faster than just pouring reg on regular dirt so you got to really know what you're doing there too you have you have less time to get from one end to the other when you're on styrofoam than you would if you was on dirt so it's basically just you know what we it's basically a process of starting and then knowing how much you got to hustle to get from one end to the other based on the conditions like temperature sun shade 
wind, stuff like that. So that's kind of those are those are the intangibles there that most people don't understand when they stamp concrete. That basically comes with a lot of experience, you know. Now what we're using a liquid release today. We do have a little bit of tint in the liquid release. We, we like to put a little bit of um, powdered liquid release and mix it in there so we have a, a two-tone effect and that that kind of eliminates a step but it's it's basically preference how you want to add the antiquing color you could teak wash this afterwards you could use you could use powder here as your release agent or you know liquid release like this with a little bit of powder in it these are the, Butter, the Butterfield Ashler Slate Stamps. These are one of the stamp patterns that we do the most of. I, what I like about these stamps is they're, they're pretty good size. You know, they're like almost four feet by four feet. So you can cover, really cover some ground with these pretty fast, especially if you've got two or three guys that really know what they're doing. Um, you know, something like this is between five and 600 square feet. You know, three guys three guys can get this stamped out and if they're really hustling and they really need to probably in about 30 minutes which is on a hot day in the sun it's that's that's all you're going to have maximum anyway day like today we, you know we got a little more time we can be a little bit more flexible a little bit more casual with how fast we got to go so that's why you see us doing it the way we're doing it and we're just we're just you know we're going to we're gonna wash everything with Dawn dish detergent afterwards too. That's why, that's why we didn't. Again, we didn't poly off the house here. The little bit of overspray liquid release we get on the bottom, maybe that bottom piece of siding, will wash right off with the Dawn dish detergent. The lake up here too, these people lived on was really nice. This was a really nice spot. All right, we're back on our stamp concrete patio job. Got to get it sawed cleaned strip form stripped off get it ready for sealing so this is the next day process working around some other crews here today too Luke's pretty much got it all sawed yeah we went about every eight feet or so this is about 60 feet. We'll get all our saw cuts in. Get the form stripped off. Ready for power washing. One pretty nice thing about this pattern is when you do saw your joints in, a lot of times you can get them right in the grooves of the saw pattern, of the stamp pattern itself, so the, the saw cuts don't stick out quite so much. And then washing it, you know, it's pretty satisfying. Actually, it kind of looks good after you wash it, getting it wet. Gives you an idea of what it's going to look like after it gets sealed. And it, it doesn't take too much effort to get this part done. All right, that does it for today. So we'll give that 24 to 48 hours to dry up, cure out. And we'll be back, put the sealer on it. Then we'll be done. Get paid. So when I seal it, as you can see, I did want to protect the house. I didn't want to get any of the acrylic sealer on the siding. So I just taped that up real quick. Got my little DeWalt leaf blower here, and I'm, I'm just blowing any dust off. And then here comes the first coat of sealer. This stuff dries really quick. The stuff we use, I really like it. So I can get, you know, I can really get three coats on is what we shoot for pretty quick, usually within 30, 40 minutes. You can see what the sealer does to the color. It helps make the color really pop. I like putting it on three really thin coats. You don't want to get it on too thick, but that's kind of the finished look right there. That's what it's going to look like when we get it, when everything's all done, and I'm just finishing up. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.